Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Sickage Live Salesforce Edition. Uh, we are bringing you the latest and greatest in everything Salesforce. Today, we're diving into the industry waters with Salesforce Insurance and Ma Insurance and Managing General Agencies, also known as MGAs. Uh, while we're live, we have one of our Salesforce experts online right now. So make sure to ask our ex experts questions in the comment section if you have any. Uh, happy to, to try and answer those. We want this to be as active and engaging as possible for all of our audience members. So feel free to type into that chat into the uh, comment boxes and we'll try to get to your questions. Uh, again, don't forget to like and subscribe. We come to you every uh, Tuesday, 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time uh, with our Sickage Live Salesforce edition. So uh, make sure to sign up, like, and subscribe to get those notifications and to make sure that you are um, uh, getting those notifications when we go live each Tuesday. So thanks again so much, everyone, for joining. I'm going to bring on our guest here. We have Randy. Um, and uh, we are really excited to have you. Thank you so much for joining us today, Randy. Thank you, Mike. Absolutely. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself first? Sure. I'm a partner in the uh, Salesforce practice with Sickage. I came to Sickage last October as part of an acquisition of NextGen Consultants, also a Salesforce partner. So I've been working as a Salesforce consultant and solution architect for about 12 years, much of it focused on the insurance industry and doing much of the same now as Sickage and working on business development and project work and assisting insurance firms and other organizations, uh, getting the most out of uh, the Salesforce platform. Absolutely. Well, we're glad to have you today. Uh, and uh, thanks for answering all my questions I'm going to throw at you. Are you ready? Yes, I am. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I want to dive right into the industry specifics uh, with Salesforce. So let's just talk about the the uh, general high level overview of what is an insurance agency and an MGA or managing general agency, and how do they fit into the insurance industry overall? Yeah, so um, think of their three primary business models in the insurance industry. First are insurance carriers, and these are the organizations that actually hold the policy with the customer. Uh, the premiums go to them, but they're also responsible for the coverage and the claims. So I'm sure you've heard a lot of them. For example, USAA, Liberty Mutual, State Auto, Great American Insurance. Now, the MGAs and the 
agencies, what they are is they are distribution channels for the carriers. And really we're going to focus a lot on agencies and MGAs today. Um, uh, so, uh, agencies, first of all, come in two flavors. There are independents and captives. What an independent is, they're able to represent the insurance products of multiple carriers. So their strength is they're able to offer their customers a broader ar array of insurance products. Now, captives, on the other hand, are associated with a certain carrier. And so their advantage is they're aligned with a big brand name like a state farm. OK, so typically what insurance agencies do is they help their customers. Typically, are there, they are consumers and small, medium businesses find the right coverage. OK, it could be like a business owner's policy or it could be like, you know, home uh, and uh, auto insurance for a consumer. Um, uh, now, MGA, uh, which stands for managing general agency, as you mentioned earlier, uh, they are also a distribution channel and their customers are actually agencies. So they kind of sit between the uh, agency and the carrier. And typically what they do is they specialize in certain areas. Say, for example, go, go ahead, Mike. Were you going to ask a question there? No, no, I'm just. Yeah. Along. <laughs> OK, say, for example, cyber insurance or builders risk. So they have a lot of specialization, a lot of knowledge, they have underwriting skills, and probably most importantly, they have a ton of great relationships with the carriers, they have clout with the carriers. So they're really good at helping these agencies find the right coverage for their customers. Now there are other models, but those are, those are I would say, the, the three primary. Absolutely. So now there's, you know, there, there's a lot going on in the world today, <laughs> and we're, sure is. we're constantly seeing change after change. Our, is this happening today with these insurance agencies and, and MGAs? Are they experiencing kind of the same things that are happening? And what other challenges are, are they facing today? Yeah, they're facing uh, quite a few challenges, but just to name a few, uh, for agencies especially, uh, carriers are not paying as much in commission. So the way that agencies and carriers, or I'm sorry, the agencies and MGAs make their money is purely on commissions from carriers. And the rate of commission against premium is declining, especially for agencies. And I understand that's been a trend that's been going on for a couple of years. Uh, the other is the, is, uh, the gap between consumers and the carriers being filled with technology. So you've been hearing all the ads, like for Progressive, you know, bundle home and auto and save, right? And now consumers can apply for insurance online. They can get quotes online. They can change their coverage online. Uh, they can submit and track claims online. They can do renewals online. So what this means is the retention rates uh, for agencies on the consumer side is, is, is declining it's, and it's getting tougher for them. And also, uh, you mentioned earlier about what's going on in the world overall, certainly they're being affected by COVID too. Um, you know, everybody's been affected, but one key thing that's happening in insurance is they've been forced to return billions and billions of dollars in auto premiums. And in fact, since April, auto claims have dropped by about 40 to 45%, which had a has had a financial ripple effect throughout the insurance industry. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, in, in, and I'm not sure if you mentioned this before earlier, but how was COVID specifically? Yeah, you know, I and I should have called that out on my last comment. That was due to COVID, the extreme uh, decline in auto claims, which in many respects is very, very good, right? But it's also meant for uh, the insurance carriers. They have returned billions of dollars in, in premium backs to consumers. Absolutely. Okay, so what are some of the ways that agencies and MGAs are addressing these challenges right now? Well, um, you know, and, and this will tie a lot into uh, how uh, Salesforce and the Salesforce platform really helps these organizations. But for agencies, it's really establishing a unique niche or an identity uh, for their particular uh, agency. So not only de geographic differentiation, which, you know, for a lot of agencies, they rely on their relationships in their local towns and cities. But now we're seeing agencies establish identity in certain lines of coverage. For example, let's say builder supply or franchises or even firefighters we've been hearing about. Uh, 
Also, there could be a specialized niche, you know, even regionally or nationally, where they could, let's say, specialize in medical malpractice or aerospace insurance, which covers pilots and aircraft. Um, and to that same point, and boy, this will really play into some of the capability of Salesforce is way more emphasis on targeted marketing and using social media as a channel. And just fact, anecdotally, I've been seeing a lot more posts by MGAs and agencies right on LinkedIn. I, I, I agree. I feel like I've been seeing more and more of that. Uh, c commercials and content yeah. on uh, um, YouTube and, you know, those different platforms that are kind of expanding into those areas that they hadn't been before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a couple other points is agencies, I think, are uh, making sure they're uh, or what producers, which is a term for salespeople and insurance, are more of advisors and making sure they're looking out uh, for the right coverages for their customer and recommending the right insurance project uh, products, especially on the on the uh, what's called the commercial side, uh, where uh, they can advise and recommend the right policies. And uh, you know, when, when you think about it, what really counts in insurance is to make sure you have the right coverage. Mm -hmm. So if you're a, a business owner cares about the coverage when he's got to submit a claim, right? Then he's going to find out whether he's not, uh, whether or not he's got the right coverage. So establishing a reputation is, as an agency on being a great advisor to a business is a big differentiator for him. A um, couple more points is uh, analytics. And this has been independently noted as a key thing for both agency and MGAs is tracking referral sources. Um, you know, it, it's great that they have a number of referral channels, both in terms of centers of influences or mm -hmm. perhaps even networking groups, but are they tracking it? Are they really able to find out which ones are effective? Also, what are the behaviors that successful producers employ? So um, what methods are they using to be successful in being able to mentor their colleagues? And, and that can be tracked in a CRM to identify what are the right behaviors that other uh, producers can adopt. Um, and on a final note, digital technology, just like the carriers are. And uh, there's kind of a blanket term in insurance called insure tech which really encompasses all the digital technology from uh, vendors that uh, insurance firms can use. So there are conferences and webinars. And so there's just a tremendous growth in insure tech because of all the efficiencies, cost savings and communications, business models that can be achieved with it. Absolutely. So. So I know that uh, we may have a lot of viewers here that aren't necessarily inside of the insurance insurance, I can't say insurance today, or MGA uh, uh, industry or vertical. Um, so just to create more engagement, if we do have people out there that want to add comments, we're going to talk a little bit more about Salesforce now, what we're going to get into. So um, and the features that it offers to improve customer service. So if you're everyone out there is a customer of insurance agencies. So enter into the comments what you want to see from your insurance agency to improve your customer experience. Um, I think that'd be an interesting, inter interesting find. Um, so um, enter those into the comments below. Um, and getting into that a little bit more, how do the solutions built on Salesforce help these agencies and these MGAs? Well, one area we're seeing a lot of growth in is uh, marketing automation. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, these tools can be used to market through social media, email campaigns, webinars, and to our point earlier about how important it is to differentiate, these marketing automation tools uh, can really capitalize and take advantage of these kind of messaging of the differentiation. And on top of that, they can track uh, return on investment of their campaigns. They can do what's called attribution, which is be able to attribute the various campaigns and what led to written business. And, and then they have a better idea of where to invest their marketing dollars going forward. And uh, another big area, and this is all kind of native Salesforce with you know configurations using Salesforce Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, uh, Marketing Cloud. Uh, another area is sales productivity. And uh, one of the things that agencies are really focused on is 
uh, getting new business. They can't live on renewals anymore. So they, the sales cloud tools can be a great way to hold uh, the producers accountable. And we see a lot of them using to establish activity and uh, written premium goals right in the Salesforce CRM and track against those. For example, a very common use is what's called X dates. So that's an expiration date of a policy that's being, uh, you know, uh, managed through a different agency that you're trying to move over to your agency and setting up very distinct steps in the cycle leading up to the X date, because when is a customer most likely to move from one agency to another at the expiration policy date? And again, the you know tracking the success of referral sources. So we have seen that folks and agencies who use Salesforce Sales Cloud and some of the related technologies are driving higher results and gaining new business. Um, and what about uh, what about for MGAs though? How you know yeah. is there a difference there or anything? Yeah, boy, I think the opportunities are huge for MGA. I mean, just some of the things that are happening today is we have customers who are using the Salesforce platform to uh, track all the way from appointing an agency. Mm -hmm. So appointment means that's I'm going to sign up this agency to be able to submit potential business through me as the MGA. So that a whole appointment tracking process, the due, related due diligence, once they become appointed, to be able to do submissions right through Salesforce, track it all the way through underwriting to getting quotes from the carrier, feeding those quotes back to the agency and submitting those quotes to the end customer, and then even calculating commissions based on pre-established rates. That's all can be done and is done in Salesforce. It is creating tremendous operational efficiencies, it's lowering cost, and a, a lot of great things and, and fostering way more collaboration between the MGAs and their, uh, their agency partners and their carrier partners. It's great for all stakeholders. Absolutely. And, I, and I've said this before in other Salesforce editions, but it's a nice one-stop shop because yes, you don't need yeah. 10 different uh, applications to go into and have logins or, you know, you're, you're all in Salesforce, right? Yes, all in Salesforce. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the investments that Salesforce is making to bring value to these insurance firms? Um, Salesforce is making investments uh, in uh, not only their core platform, but a platform uh, called Financial Services Cloud, mm -hmm. or what is often referred to as FSC. It started in wealth management, it's expanded to banking, and now it's really Salesforce is making investments uh, in FSC to support insurance, you know, policies, uh, coverages, uh, claims management. Now, right now it's targeted more for uh, carriers, but I'm sure over time it will have a more and more applicability to agencies and MGAs. Um, and I think another thing, uh, important point here is, is Salesforce has partnerships with uh, organizations like Veruna. Uh, uh, Veruna provides a full agency management system or AMS, uh, which is often called an independent insurance agencies. And think of that as an ERP system for uh, insurance agencies. There are 35,000 of them in the US. And uh, this platform is soup to nuts, all the way from prospecting to policy management, the coverages, the schedules, to even, even accounting. And um, uh, even download from carriers, which is policy and uh, commission information automatically fed right into Varuna. And uh, if you look at the, this space, uh, uh, a lot of these 35,000 insurance agencies, they use, you know, 80s and 90s AMS platforms or they're, they're tough to configure, they're tough to integrate with, or, you know, they don't really integrate well with third parties. So when you've got a platform that does everything for an insurance agency built on Salesforce, you've got a kind of full answer for them because of the core capabilities around the platform. You customize, integrate, add third party apps, et cetera. Absolutely. So what are some of the untapped areas for agencies and MGAs to use Salesforce? Yeah, good question, uh, Mike. I, I uh, just let me turn. Um, uh, a couple things. Um, I think two key areas. One is customer communities and service cloud. I mean, 
some insurance firms are using this technology, but I think they're underused right now. If you think about the fact that an MGA would be able to set up a portal for their ag agencies to be able to make submissions and track the quotes all within Salesforce and have a seamless process in their communication with their agencies. And also, you know, there's a natural tie-in between Salesforce service cloud and communities and to be able to set up a whole support process, right? All within the community, set up, let's say knowledge articles, right? Where customers can do their agencies. And of course the agency's customers can do self-service. That's crucial and lowers overall service costs with those platforms. Integrations, another big area, uh, you know, Salesforce is so easy to integrate with, right? And uh, what we see, especially in the MGA space, and it's happening already, where MGAs are taking their production data. And what that data is in a back office, it's all the premium, all the, uh, you know, the, the claims, uh, the submissions, uh, the renewals. And if we can feed that into Salesforce, which, you know, some of our customers are already doing by agency, what, uh, the MGAs can do is they can measure the success of an, of an agency, which ones are fastest growing, which ones are fastest declining, which ones are submitting the most business and of ones that are submitting the most business, which ones are closing the most business, which is even more important, and which ones are writing the best business, which is, you know, they have lower loss ratios. So all in all, I think the, the community, the service cloud and the integrations is really an un untapped area where, you know, the, the Salesforce platform can provide just tons of value. Great, yeah. Um, that's all the questions that I have for you today. Um, Thanks so much for being here, Randy. Really appreciate it. Sure. Uh, and uh, hope to have you back on again, of course. We always like it when we have someone come back for take two of Sickage Live. Uh, thanks everyone for being here today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's the only way that you're gonna be able to get these notifications when we go live on Tuesdays. Uh, we also have a live on Thursdays at 2.30 Central Time, 3.30 Eastern Time. So you can always catch us two times a week. Uh, thanks again to Randy for being here and answering all my questions that I had for you. And uh, we uh, will see you all on Thursday. Bye. Thanks, Mike. Thanks.